shipped me a dozen roses. Like, you will get arrested for that behavior. Other daughter stuff at me last minute. I feel like I'm just finishing this book out of spite now. Hi friends and welcome to another video. It is the end of February basically. February is basically over and that is just insane. I feel like this month went by so so quickly but I read quite a bit this month. Not towards the beginning. The beginning was kind of taken over by me getting my wisdom teeth out which was an experience. Never have to worry about them ever again. But then I started finding some incredible fantasy books that I'm really, really excited to share with y'all today. So I'm gonna just jump to Michaela in the past while I start reading Legendborn. So as you can see, I am not in Chicago anymore. <laughs> I um, had to go down and help family out this week, so here I am. Either way, I started Legendborn last Thursday, the day after I got my wisdom tooth out, and I was really enjoying it, and then I stopped reading it because of a lot of different things that happened, but that's gonna change today. We are going to finish this book today. Uh, it's like 400 pages that I still have to go. <laughs> so it's gonna be, I think, an all-day adventure. But we're gonna finish this today. I'm very determined to just like buckle down, get into Bree's story. I want to get into it. I want to get into the secret society stuff. I want to get into the magic stuff. I, I'm already really, really excited about it because I didn't realize this was set in the Carolinas. Um, if you don't know, I'm from South Carolina. I grew up there and I just love it when I pick up a book that has places from the Carolinas in it. It just makes me really nostalgic and reminiscent of home. So I was very, very excited to see that this book was set there, at least in North Carolina, and it was, ah, it just made me so happy. But either way, we are going to finish this today. I'm determined it's going to happen. Ah, let's go. way now. I have so many thoughts, but oh my goodness does this book live up to the hype. I cannot believe that this sat on my TBR for so long. I'm, I'm so mad at myself because this book is just so incredible in so many ways. I have so many thoughts that I want to dive in before I finish it because Oh my goodness, so many intense feelings. Like, I am stressing. I am so tense. My shoulders have not gotten a break, and I need a moment, a breather, and I'm gonna chat with you about, oh my goodness, all my thoughts and feelings. So the first thing I wanna bring up is how incredibly accurate this depiction of the South is. I grew up on the border of a plantation and a native reservation. A lot of my friends were of the Catawba tribe, but being so close to the just old money richness and having those like lines of generations and having people that like, I can't talk to you because I'm not part of this like rich crowd necessarily. Like capturing all of that in this book is so insane. I've never, I've never had that um, aspect of the South captured in a book before, and oh my gosh, this just does it perfectly. And I'm like, yes, that's what it is. Like when you go to like college campuses in the South, that's what it is. I don't know. It again, I she just perfectly captured it in this book, and I've never felt my like childhood like felt more seen like I, I just I'm like yeah that's that's exactly what it's like I've met these people I've 
literally talk to these people. That is what it's like. And that's just crazy to me. Again, I've, ne I've never read a book like that. And I'm just, my mind is blown. The other thing I wanted to add is the magic system in this. Oh my word. Having King Arthur be the like symbol of this like rich family setting in the South and having practices more focused on nature and ancestors and giving back being these like opposing forces just makes so much sense and it adds so much to the world, to the narrative, to Bree's own emotions and feelings and that is what good magic systems do. They add to the story you are trying to tell. They don't take away from it. I have read so many fantasy books where like world building doesn't like necessarily take precedent but can overshadow what the actual story is trying to accomplish and I am all for exploring cool worlds and diving into cool places like that's not necessarily what I'm saying it's just that when a world takes over a plot it's no longer an interesting book to me and I don't think the magic system serves the world well or the plot well or the characters well if it takes over if that makes sense this adds so much. It, again, it depicts every single struggle that Brie herself is having with all of these conflicting emotions. It depicts the struggles of classism, of racism that is present in the South constantly. And oh, what on earth? I, I'm just, it's so brilliant and I'm, I, I don't even have the words. It's brilliant, like genuinely brilliant. I have never seen anything like this and oh my goodness. I don't know. I just, I just think this book is so perfect in so many ways. If it's not a five star, I'm gonna be devastated. Like if this ending somehow decreases my enjoyment, I'm gonna be so sad, but I, there's no way. This has to be a five star read. I'm gonna even say it's a six star read. I'm gonna say this is probably one of my favorite fantasy novels I've ever read. Read this book. Read this book. I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna keep reading it. Like my heart is pounding. I'm so stressed out. I don't know what's gonna happen. <sighs> There's so many conflicting things and ideas and people. And oh my word. Oh my word. throw the mother-daughter stuff at me last minute. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I just needed to come on because it's been a minute since a book made me cry. But goodness, that chapter. Y'all know what I'm talking about if you've read it. Um... Oh, I need to call my mom. <laughs> So many thoughts running through my head and I am so stressed for my girl Brie. I am so stressed. <laughs> I do not have the second book on me right now. I do not know how y'all waited two full years before figuring out what's going on. I, I don't know how you did it. I have to wait for a week and I'm devastated that I'm gonna just be sitting in this anxiety and fear. But oh my goodness was this book perfect. It was, it was perfect. It was so good. It was everything I could have hoped for and so much more. Um, all of the things that I said halfway through the book still very much ring true. I won't bring up those points again because it just continued on through the end. I just wanted to add that the depiction of grief with Brie just so incredibly written and you can tell that the author understands grief like real grief what that feels like um i read the author's note which i highly recommend 
always reading the author's note um, when you read books because it offers so much insight about their lives and about why they wrote the book, how they wrote the book, oh, so many things. Always read the author's note, it's so important. And Tracy, the author, wrote this so well because she knows the grief of losing a mother. And I'm like, it's so obvious. Like, I, there's no way anyone else could have written this that well. Like, there's no way. Um, she also talks about the amount of research that she did and her love of specifically, like, the myth of King Arthur and all of that, what that encompasses. I just, I just love the last portion of this author's note. I have to read it to you. She says, To me, Arthur represents the seat of canon in Western legend. Arthurita is an opportunity for us to reorient ourselves to the stories we preserve and rediscover who gets to be legendary. And that encapsulates what this book is. It's it's redefining who gets to be legendary. And Brie Matthews certainly is legendary. Oh my word. Oh, the ending. There's a whole range of emotions with that ending. It was devastating, stressful, but like in good ways, you know? Like, I, I wanted my heart to be hurt. <laughs> It was so incredible, so fast-paced. I was racing to the end. I'm sure I didn't get, I don't even think I got much footage of me reading after I cried <laughs> because I was just, it was just one page after the other. I have to figure out what's going on, what's happening, what's going on with, with Nick and with Bree and with Cell and what's happening. Oh, goodness. Read this book, read Legendborn. If you have not, this is, this is your moment. This is your sign to do it. I waited too long. It's it's not too late to change it for you. Read Legendborn. Oh my word. Um, to swage my impatience for not being able to read the second book immediately <laughs> right now, I am going to start Ray Bearer. So Ray Bearer is a recommendation that I got from Alyssa. She goes by She Be Reading Them Books on TikTok. She's incredible. Highly recommend checking her out. Um, but she had a like incredible list of fantasy recs and this was one of her favorites and I'm really really excited to read it because I'm also doing a buddy read, which is so fun. I'm doing a buddy read with my mutual jewels, who could, you could also find on TikTok. Highly recommend. She's great. I love her content. Um, but we're reading this together and I am already behind. Uh, <laughs> I definitely need to be reading this starting yesterday, <laughs> but that's okay. So this book follows a young woman as she is competing with a group to be part of the crown prince's circle. Um, but her mother, I believe, I think it's her mom, um, or the woman called the lady is compelling her and trying to force her to kill the crown prince. So there's kind of, I think there's gonna be like a little bit of en enemies to lovers vibes with this in a way because of that compelling, it sounds exciting. I also really loved this because Alyssa and her recommendation list uh, actually said that it's one of like the best romances in fantasy that she's read, which I love. I, I am a big fan of having a romance subplot in a overarching fantasy world. I'm a big, big fan of that. I think it's great. I think it just adds a little bit of coziness. It adds so much to the characters. I just love it. And this sounds like exactly that. So I'm going to start reading this. We're, we're just going on a big reading day today. I'm very, very excited. It is the next day, um, and I I made a mistake staying up way too late reading that book and doing stuff, and I now have to drive five hours back home to Chicago, and I am so tired, <laughs> but I am really enjoying uh, Ray Bearer right now. Um, what a first line. The first line is, I shouldn't have been surprised that fairies exist. I am 
hooked. What do you mean fairies exist? What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> um, this is this is just a great time. I'm really enjoying it. Milo, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's having a good time. I don't know. I, I have no idea. Either way, I am, I made a mistake. I'm very tired and I need to pack and get everything ready to go and then drive five hours back home, which is, which is a choice. <laughs> Um, I think I am going to pop in an audiobook and get going on my day because um, I should have been packing like an hour ago. I'm going to continue listening to The Children of Virtue and Vengeance. I started that book, the audiobook, just a while ago and I've just slowly been reading it. But oh my goodness, it's so good. The first book, The uh, Children of Blood and Bone, I really enjoyed it, but the like romance section in it, I felt the pacing got thrown off because of the romance that was in it, even though the romance was like very necessary to the plot. I, I'm very understanding of why that was in there, but I just felt like the book suffered a little bit from the pacing in that section. The Children of Virtue and Vengeance does not have that problem, at least thus far, and the audiobook Bonnie Turpin is so incredible. I do not know how someone can tell stories that well. Like she is such an incredible narrator, actor, voice actor, storyteller. Like she's just so incredible. And I think that's what's making this book so much better. Like I'm enjoying the narrative 100%, but her voice acting top tier goodness it's so so good so i'm gonna pop that in start getting ready for the day start packing and then we're gonna drive back home <laughs> and it's gonna be five long hours but that's all right are you ready to go home are you ready to go home yeah yeah We are ready to go. We are all packed. You ready? You ready to go home? He is very excited to see Mac. It's been a minute. Um, and also it was Valentine's Day when I was uh, down here, which was just really sad timing, but I needed to, you know, help out some family. But Mac being the absolute sweetheart still shipped me a dozen roses. I love him so much. <laughs> I know that that is probably so sappy, but I just needed to share. I'm so excited. So I, I packaged them. So hopefully I'll be able to bring them back home with me and it'll work. It'll be good. Um, but I'm going to continue listening to my audiobook. I might switch over to the podcast world beyond number because I just love it so much <laughs> and sometimes when I'm driving for a really really long period of time I need to like switch it up like my ADHD needs to be activated at all times otherwise I will zone and accidentally cause problems with the car so I think those are the two things I'm going to be listening to on this drive and yeah I guess I'll see you in five hours oof rough that just makes me so it's just so sad it's not like the worst drive in the world but again i'm just so tired <laughs> Actually, back home. I'm so happy to be done driving and to be home and just to relax 
for the rest of the evening. I have a little bit of editing to do for a video that I'm putting up tomorrow, which will already be out. I reorganized the entirety of my bookshelf and it was, a, it was an event, <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to spend after editing um, the rest of the night just relaxing. Um, I'm going to read a little bit more of Ray Bear, I think. Um, it was really funny because Jules, the person I am doing the buddy read with, messaged me today and she was like, so like, how's it going? And I don't think e either of us started until last night. <laughs> so we are extending our little like timeline of how long this book is going to take for us to read because yeah, we, we, we both waited until the last minute, which it's just so fitting. We both have ADHD. I just feel like it fits so much. Um, but either way, I'm going to probably read more of that tonight. Edit, relax, just decompress from driving and doing all that today. <laughs> all right, it is the next day and I'm really, really excited. We are going to go run some errands and pick up a library book just at the library right now that I am so excited about. I can't wait to chat about it and I can't wait to read it because it's literally been on my TBR for so long and the paperback version just came out and my library has it and I'm just, oh my goodness, we'll chat about that in a minute. But we're going to go pick that book up and then we're going to spend the rest of the day uh, playing Baldur's Gate 3. I'm really, really excited to get back into the world. Me and Mac have been playing the co-op version um, for like our first run through because we were just both super, super excited about it. And we love both of our characters so much. We call them like the like twins and they're just like Re wreaking havoc um, <laughs> for the entirety of Faerun and it's so fun so I'm going to show you my tab and we are almost all the way through act one we are currently in the underdark and it's it's insane it's crazy so I'll show you some of that we'll talk about this book that I'm really excited about but yeah let's go to the library <laughs> so so excited about this book it is that time i got drunk and saved a demon um by kimberly lemming and first of all the cover and the title are just absolutely fantastic i'm so excited about this but the paperback just recently came out and my library had it in stock and i'm just so pumped for it um basically so the main character uh cinnamon gets drunk one night and accidentally saves a demon and then they go on a little adventure together. I've heard that a lot of people are calling this a like cozy fantasy, but it was really funny because the author herself was like, I don't really understand why this is a cozy fantasy, like why it's being labeled that way, because people like do battle and do die. So I think it's like a little bit of like a step above cozy fantasy. There's some stakes there, like the stakes are there, but it has the cozy vibes, which is perfect. And it just reminds me of like all the things that I just love in fantasy, especially like D&D-esque fantasy. I just, the goofiness and the coziness and I don't know, I, I'm just really pumped about this. I've heard so many great things and I'm excited to finally start the series. But that being said, I'm gonna wait because I'm gonna play Baldur's Gate 3 today. Speaking of D&D cozy fantasies that aren't really cozy, um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna play that and have some fun and show you guys my tab and do all those fun things. So it's gonna be great. So we 100% played Baldur's Gate 3 for the rest of the weekend, and we got all the way to Act 2, so 
It was a grand old time. I'm so pumped that we spent our weekend that way. It was just such a good time and Baldur's Gate 3 continues to impress me as I play it. It's just, just a top tier game. But that being said, I also finished Ray Bear and we have to chat about it. Also, if you hear dogs barking, I do apologize. My neighbor's dogs are very upset for some reason and I'm not sure why, but Ray Bear has won the best found family that I have ever read in a fantasy book. This group of just close-knit people have my whole heart. I love them so much and it just like warms my soul to see platonic love play out in this book. There is definitely a romance, we will get to that, but just again like the showing of platonic love and how powerful it is is just so beautiful in this book. It's wonderful. The romance is so sweet and cute and everything I wanted. <laughs> it was exactly what Alyssa from She Be Reading the Books described and it didn't take over the book, it added to the plot, it elevated every single moment in this book and that is how you do a good romance subplot. If it elevates your story, you should have it. If it takes away, do not add a romance plot in because it will only distract from other things in the book. This does not have that problem and it's so good and so sweet and it just had me so happy that Tar was so happy. She's just such an incredible main character. I adored the journey that she went on trying to reclaim her name, her life, and her story and what that means. It was just incredibly done and incredibly executed. Oh my goodness. The ending of this book was also just top tier. I was so excited and pumped and nervous and on the edge of my seat, but it just worked out so well. And again, it, the arc that Tar goes on throughout this book, top tier. The only problem I had with this book was there was a few pacing issues. And I say like, a minuscule amount of pacing issues. There were a few times all of the intensity went away for a second. I'm not really sure why that was. It might have, again, just been me reading it, but you have to read this book. If you love fantasy, you want a incredible, unique fantasy world, and you want found family, and you want a world that has geopolitical issues that are drowning out the important issues of what actually needs to happen. If you want a world that tears down the system and succeeds at tearing down the system, I adored this book. And yeah, I'm just really happy. I'm like writing a high. I've been writing a high since I finished it. Um, I really hope that this next book keeps the high of this one because it is my most anticipated read of the year. And I got an arc of it, which I'm very, very grateful for. So thank you so much to Nat Galley and to the author for allowing me to have this arc. Um, but it is to gaze upon wicked gods. So this book follows a 19 year old girl named Ruing who has the power of death. Basically, she can like take life from whoever she wants. Um, and she was gifted this by death. Some enemy prince finds out about this power and kidnaps her to try and use her power for his means and it sounds like it's in like an enemies to lovers which i am excited about because i think fantasy is the only way to do enemies to lovers correctly like one enemies to lovers in like real life that doesn't make sense you can't be like oh i'm gonna kill someone for you you're in the real world like, you will get arrested <laughs> for that behavior. So I really think it only works in fantasy. And also, that being said, like, fantasy has a really unique way of having two parties being on, like, equal footing and being just as annoying to the other party. And so where the enemy might be a bad guy to the main character, um, the main character is still doing not great things to the enemy and that's how they can 
see the worst in each other and eventually fall in love and I really loved that so I'm really excited I'm really hopeful it is a YA fantasy which all of these have been YA fantasies and they've all impressed me so far so yeah we're gonna start reading this book and I again I'm so hopeful I'm so excited it's it's been on my TBR since I think the end of 2023 and ah yes This has been happening for over 15 minutes now. I, I don't know what has set them off. This is gonna be our ambiance while we read, I guess. <laughs> chapters in. So this is very much still the beginning of the book. Um, but it is so repetitive. It's been so, so repetitive. I feel like I just read the same chapter like three times, um, which is making me nervous. <laughs> it's making me a little nervous, but I'm going to keep reading. It was the first few chapters, so we're going to keep reading. So, I just met the love interest. I think he's the love interest because he's the enemy crowned prince. I think I'm being tricked into reading a colonizer romance. Like, legit. I think that this is what this is. Not a fan. Not a fan. Nope. There is still the, um, childhood friend that could be her love interest, so I'm hoping that Maybe I just was wrong when reading the summary and, you know, he's gonna- this guy is gonna kidnap her and she's gonna kill him, I'm hoping, because she sounds like she wants to kill him right now, because, you know, this guy has destroyed the lives of her family and her people. So why wouldn't you feel that way? If this guy ends up being the love interest, I don't think I'm gonna like this book at all, which is so sad, um, because I was very, very excited about this book, and yeah, I think this is a colonizer romance. I don't know. I don't know. There was just a huge time jump, and she is... Antony's, this crown prince's, um, assassin to, like, protect her family. So we kind of skipped over all of the death magic that seemed really interesting, which is unfortunate, but also I don't necessarily want to see her killing off her own people for this her awful man. And then it's just been revealed that she has been being tortured, basically, for the time jump, the months that we skipped over, by a, like, collar that electrocutes her if she does the wrong thing. So she's, like, basically a dog to these people. And then Antony, who is now for sure the love interest, which is horrible, Antony took basically the collar off and she's grateful to him for no longer choosing to torture her? Keep in mind, she is still being forced to assassinate people to make sure her family doesn't die. And now she's thanking him for not torturing her as bad as he could have? I feel like I'm just finishing this book out of spite now. Like, I just want to be able to read this book and gather 
information for my review. Because what on earth is happening? What what is happening? What is happening? Why was this the choice that was made for this story? The magic is cool. The world is cool. I like the random sci-fi element that got thrown in. That's cool. Why are we being okay with torture in a YA book for a love interest? This feels like a dark romance book, but I know it's a YA fantasy. I feel like I have a headache. <laughs> I finished it. What the hell did I just read? I am really upset. <laughs> Very disappointed. I think disappointed is the right word, not necessarily like upset. I am extremely disappointed. Okay, let's let's talk about positives. Positives. The potential for an incredible story was there. The potential for death magic to be super cool absolutely there. The descriptions of when she does use her magic, great. Absolutely love it. The world itself, super cool. I, when I was first starting the book, it was a little repetitive, but it kind of got better. Got worse in other ways. <laughs> when I originally started the book, I thought that the colonization, it was going to be like a critique of colonization. Um, and I think that's what the author set out to do, but that is not what she achieved with this book. Because that romance was romanticizing the colonizer every single step of the way. It was, it was not good. And I was just screaming at Ruing to figure it out. Like, girl, this man is an issue and an, a problem. Everyone else in your life is telling you this man is an issue and a problem and that you are in a very abusive situation and you're being forced to do something against your will. But because she's in this cage, she kind of develops like a Stockholm Syndrome situation with Antony and starts supporting him no matter what, which then leads to her bad-mouthing the resistance movement that is in the book, um, that was present in the book from the very beginning, that is growing and growing and gaining more and more support. Her sister is a part of it. And because Ruing is in this, like, really abusive situation, she ends up bad-mouthing and belittling the resistance movement because Antony belittles the resistance movement. I Again, I don't think that's what the author set out to do. I don't think she tried to do that. But reading 300 pages of someone bad-mouthing resistance movements while upholding a colonizer is really, really hard. This is a little bit going into spoiler territory. And if you want to read this book, feel free to read this book. Um, you have been warned that it is a colonizer romance. It's not enemies to lovers. It feels very much like a dark romance that was made for teenagers, which feels so wrong. Oh my goodness. Either way, the ending. Ruing figures out that Antony is experimenting on her people and views her people as animals, basically, even though he says that he loves her. Once she finds that out, she realizes Antony is a monster and she joins the resistance movement to tear apart Antony and his colonizer family and everything, which is good. That was a, that's a good ending for what this book was. Why did we have to have a whole book romanticizing that relationship only for it to be torn down. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is like a satire, if it's supposed to be critiquing this, if it's supposed to ha be saying 
like how easy it is to like fall into like sympathizing with the colonizer. There are things to be said that this book is trying to say those things, but it just didn't execute that well. So what ends up happening because of this poor execution is you have 300 pages of a romanticized, abusive colonizer relationship and the colonizer is being put in the right. He, all of his decisions and choices are being told to the reader that he's correct. He's making the right decision. He's doing the right thing. I think the biggest thing is that as like a reader, it's very clear to me that what he's doing is horrendous and wrong. But the tone of the book is saying that he's correct and right and that you should be romanticizing and wishing for this type of relationship until the last few chapters where it's all torn down and taken apart. And again, this could very much be like a satire moment, right? Absolutely. The problem is, is this is marketed as a YA fantasy enemies to lovers. And because that's how it's marketed, there's no way it could be a satire, right? Right? I don't know. Either way, right now, I feel very disappointed, disgusted. She kisses him. I'm so glad there's not a fade to black. I was so nervous there was going to be a fade to black. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm not reading this correctly. Maybe I misinterpreted the tone, but that's how it felt to me. It really felt like just a colonizer romance. And I'm so sad that I spent hours reading this. I'm so upset. I think I need to calm down before I write like a full review. I'm sure the full review will already be up and I'm sure it'll be a lot calmer than where I'm at right now. But it's so hard when you spend like hours reading a book for it to just be so disappointing. Um, <laughs> oh goodness. All right, so it is around 6.50 right now, the camera is not focusing on my phone for whatever reason. Um, but to get all of these emotions out of my head and replace them with something nice, <laughs> I am going to read the book that I got from the library that I'm so excited about. And it's that time I got drunk and saved a demon. I need some happy fantasy in my life and this is supposed to be semi cozy fantasy, which is great. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start reading this and hopefully, hopefully, I can feel joy <laughs> because I need some joy after reading whatever I just read. So I am really, really glad that I started reading this book last night because oh my goodness did I need it and did I need the pick me up this morning. This was so needed and so great and so fun and funny, let's chat. So I completely understand why people label this as a cozy fantasy now because you definitely get the like cozy comforting vibes. As someone who grew up in the south, I was so excited to see the like crawdad cooking scene that was top tier, absolutely loved that. It just felt like really just warm and comforting in a way that I cannot explain fully with words. It was incredible, but it still had those incredible like high stakes of, you know, we're fighting monsters, we're fighting a lich. It's it's insane, it's crazy. There's, there's insane things happening there. And then you have the wonderful love story between Sin and Fallon, and oh my goodness, it's so cute. I love it so much. And this book was just so perfect because there was multiple moments where I was laughing out loud. There was multiple moments where I was like swooning over Fallon. He was very great. And there was just multiple moments where I was feeling the intensity and feeling excited about this battle that was happening. And I just felt like that is exactly what I want from fantasy most of the time. Most of the time I want the like funny vibes that fantasy can bring, the funny moments of like, is this really happening right now? But also the loving moments and 
the intense moments of fighting things and I don't know. It was just incredible and I loved every second of it and I am so excited that this is an entire series. I cannot wait to read more from this world and universe and if you are needing a break from a high fantasy read or just any read that's really intense, I highly suggest picking up this one because it still is in that fantasy realm but it's just so comforting. I don't know, it's so great! And this just made me so happy after reading um, To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods last night. I was so sad after reading that book, so disappointed, and this like picked up my soul again and I'm so happy it did. Wow, wonderful. Either way, that is going to be the end of today's February reading vlog. Thank you so much for sticking this far in this kind of chaotic reading vlog. I really appreciate it and enjoying me just like geeking out about some incredible books. I found some wonderful ones this week and it's just been a great time. Either way, I again hope you enjoyed and I will see you all next Friday. Bye!